Hi, my name is Davin Sundvik with The Catch Today, and we're going to be going over hunting story number 13. So um, this is going to be a mule deer hunt the same exact year as hunting story 12 occurred. That's why I'm doing these right back to back here. So they're going to try to be, I'm going to try to post them on the same day, but here we go. Two reasons why I make these videos. First one is because if you're going to be getting advice from somebody on the internet, you want to know a little bit about their experience to make sure that their experience is something that you want to experience. Second reason is if you are one of my friends or family and you are getting into hunting, I may have directed you towards these videos and that is because um, I want to use my, my story and my growth along the way to show that there's always a starting point and there's always room for growth no matter how experienced you get. So on a lot of these newer hunts, uh, what I'm noticing is the easier it is for me to, rem it's easier for me to remember them because they're much more fresh in my memory. So they're a little bit longer because there's a lot more learning lessons for me to explain. And uh, simply, there's just more things for me to notice, more experience to kind of talk about. And oftentimes there's a lot more moving parts in some of these, uh, these newer hunts. So without any further ado, let's get right into it. So this is a mule deer hunt. Um, I had just, you know, gone maybe about a month between my pronghorn hunt and my, my mule deer hunt. Uh, so my wife was a little bit stressed out and traumatized about that um, pronghorn hunt, if you remember correctly. However, the benefit is at this point in time, she is kind of uh, recovering from that trauma, if you will, used it as a learning lesson, and now she is much more prepared and I'm much more understanding about how to take new hunters out into the field and give them a more comfortable experience. So both have kind of happened at this point. So my dad and I um, are, are tag holders on this hunt. And uh, this is an Area 17. We've hunted it before. But we've had some bad experiences hunting in uh, the fields um, after I got my buck with the shotgun. Uh, that was a great experience. But to try to get him, uh, his deer... We ran into some yahoos by those fields and we wanted to find some new areas to hunt uh, that didn't involve hunting near hunter, uh, near other hunters. So we're in we're in a couple of areas uh, that we'd pre-scouted high in elevation and, and the first couple of days go well but we don't see any mule deer during the day. We see them at night, we see them close to the road, we're hearing gunshots but just not a lot of action. Well all of a sudden it starts snowing so we have to move camp anyway. Um, so we end up moving camp and my wife and I, uh, decide that next morning, okay, well, there were still some areas that we wanted to, to hit and we're just going to do what I did last year, which was hunting those private public boundaries. But instead of committing to just one ranch, we're going to go from ranch to ranch to ranch, look at them, see if there's any deer on them that we want to shoot and make a plan on them maybe for the evening or for the next day. So that's what we do. We just pick a ranch on the south end of area 17 and we start working at the east side of area 17. We keep going north until we're almost as far north as you can get. And we're, we're on like the last hill and we're almost kind of ready to give up for the morning thinking that we're not going to see anything. We're driving through and sure enough, what does my wife see? She's, she's the one who actually notices the movement. Again, another reason why to bring new hunters. And she sees some mule deer that are moving their way through the, the sagebrush there. Now, I'm hunting with a new-to-me rifle. This is a rifle. It's chambered in 270. Um, it was a rifle that my dad was not using, and I had a scope on it that just wasn't working out for it. So he lent it to me just for the purposes of putting a scope on it, getting it sighted in, seeing if I could get it to fit my wife. Well... It never ended up fitting perfectly in the end, but at this point in time, I wanted to just show her that the rifle worked and all that kind of stuff. So because sometimes uh, new hunters need to see something work before they want to do it. So um, I have my Mosin with me. I have this rifle with me, but I don't even bring my 30 out 6 <laughs> At this point, I'm a little bit frustrated uh, with my 30 out 6 So um, I go out there. And there are a line of trees that are working diagonal. And these deer are moving from uh, south and they're moving north. Well, these trees go from southwest to north uh, northeast. So I'm kind of moving, uh, actually, sorry, from southeast to northwest. So I'm moving west 
kind of towards them because the deer are west of me and they're moving north. So we're kind of kind of angling towards each other. Well, I'm using those trees and I'm bucking it. And these deer really do not notice me. They're looking, when they look, they look back and they're looking at my wife who's sitting in the truck and the truck is still running. Um, kind of a mistake, but kind of a benefit because the deer don't notice me. Well, eventually the deer are... The deer see me, but they're so committed to their trail. They're so committed to crossing these lines, of, these lines of trees that they start crossing one by one, single file, and they get a little stressed. Well, the buck that's you know in the back, he uh, he freezes up and he just starts looking at me. Well, I aim it with the rifle, and uh, the brush is high, so I can only shoot offhand. So I take an offhand shot, hit him very very quickly and, and efficiently. And he goes, he goes right on down, and he, he is not, he's shot in the spine. He's not dead instantly though. He crawls about 20 feet and dies. Follow the blood trail right to him. It's really easy, and we're done. So, um, that that was it as far as the hunt goes, right? My wife was able to drive the truck up. We're only about 400 yards away from the road. Butcher out the deer, right? put the deer in the truck, a couple other hunters drive by, we wave to them, chat, they keep on going. I fill the tag and we're all done with the hunt, right? So way, way less traumatic than the first hunt. So uh, my wife is now getting used to just getting lucky by the road, unfortunately though. So understand that sometimes when you pick a hunting strategy, you do have to be careful because all hunting strategies work at the end of the day as long as they're legal, ethical, and sustainable. And what I mean by sustainable is that you are capable of doing that strategy over and over and over again. So the thing about driving the roads is as long as you got gas in the truck and you've got habitat to look at in public road access, you can just keep driving around on public roads and try to glass up deer and glass up new opportunities. It doesn't mean that it's a high likelihood thing or that you're gonna get monster muleys by doing it or anything like that. It just means at the end of the day, it does work. So this is what my wife starts getting accustomed to and now she's super interested um, in big game hunting and I, I keep trying to tell her like, hey look, like we kinda got lucky that day. Our goal was just to try to find the deer and get into position we happen to see deer by the road like pronghorn hunting um, and we didn't have to try to get into business we didn't try to have to build a stock on them um, it just ended up working out so understand that not every single big game hunt is an epic adventure some of them just go a little bit more smooth than other ones do yet even though this was smooth this was still hunted on the third day of hunting so not every day are you going to get the animal on opening day. So as soon as opening day happen, happens, understand that whatever your plan was has to leave. Like whatever your opening day plan is, great. But you need to use opening day as a learning opportunity because if you don't get your animal on opening day, you got to figure out how you're going to get it on that third, fourth, sometimes even fifth day of the hunt. So with that being said, I do appreciate you for watching. Trying to keep this one shorter for you guys um, for your benefit, hopefully. And with that being said, uh, comment down below. I really appreciate your comments when I do see them. It allows me to make better videos in the future and it gives me useful feedback. So again, keep the comments positive and useful, but still, if you see something or you have a question, I love answering questions. So go ahead, ask them down below. Appreciate you guys. See you guys next time.